was present one particular patient who had a severe form of metastatic kidney cancer and I used LDN initially and then I used some other therapies to treat this woman who had an extremely grim prognosis. The patient was Claudia. Claudia was 52 years old and she presented uh, to her local doctor with uh, many years of pain in her groin. Uh, she lived in a small town on the western slope of Colorado and did not have health insurance so she was unable to be adequately diagnosed. She wanted to get a CAT scan to see what was going on. She got a job working as a technician at her local hospital and uh, obtained health insurance and therefore was able to go in and get a CAT scan to find out why her groin was hurting so much. She did find a softball sized lesion in her right kidney and then she underwent exploratory surgery in mid-July of 2003. Claudia's past medical history was unremarkable. She was previously healthy. She'd been pregnant twice but had no children. She'd never been in the hospital, no allergies, was on no medications. She did not take any vitamins or supplements. She was a very light drinker and she was a non-smoker. Her family history was interesting because her three-year-old, three years older brother had also been diagnosed with renal cell cancer seven years previously. Her mother was alive and well at 82 and is still alive and well today. Her father died in a car accident when he was 68. The renal cell cancer uh, occurs in the tissue of the proximal renal tubule. It occurs both sporadic and a hereditary form. Since uh, Claudia's brother had it, she probably had the hereditary form. Renal cell cancer, even though it, it's uh, only 3% of cancers, it's the sixth leading cause of cancer deaths. In particular, uh, Claudia was stage four, where the disease has spread and has distance metastases, and the five-year survival for that is very poor, only 11%. Claudia had the most common, the clear cell type of renal cell cancer. When patients present, the classic triad uh, for diagnosis of renal cell cancer is the combination of blood in the urine, hematuria, particularly painless hematuria. Uh, the second common uh, part of the triad is flank pain, and then finally uh, a mass that's palpable in the region of the kidney in the flank or abdomen. The problem is that that classic triad of frank, flank pain, hematuria, and a mass is only seen in 10% of patients. And by the time a patient presents with those three things, they already have very advanced disease and are typically untreated. About one out of three patients are asymptomatic, and their kidney cell cancers are found as a result of a study being done for something else. The conventional treatment options for kidney cancer are quite poor. Uh, they've tried surgery, radiation, chemo, hormones, immunotherapy, but none of these is accepted as a standard of care because none of them work. So Claudia was the worst case. She was stage T4, N2, M1. Her prognosis at best was 11% chance of a five-year survival. <clears throat> So I went to the journals and uh, what they said was renal cell cancer is one of the few tumors in which well-documented cases of spontaneous tumor regression in the absence of therapy exist, but this occurs very rarely. Systemic therapy has demonstrated only limited effectiveness. For stage four renal cell cancer, almost all of these patients are incurable. There's minimal evidence that nephrectomy in induces regression of distant METs. Hence, nephrectomy and the hope that it will be followed by spontaneous regression of metastases is not advised. And she underwent surgery on 715. She had a right radical nephrectomy where they removed her kidney, adrenal glands, and lymph nodes from that side. It was a 12 centimeter lesion, which is a large uh, baseball sized lesion. The pathology was renal cell cancer. And they told her, there is no cure, you're going to die. From the chest, it says there's been interval development compared to the previous chest CAT scan of two and possibly three pulmonary nodules. The impression is intermal development of bilateral pulmonary nodules and mediastinal lymphadenopathy, worrisome for malignancy including metastatic renal cell cancer. In the abdomen, the bottom of the page circled, it says soft tissue nodule in the upper left abdomen, worrisome for mesenteric lymph node, which has increased in size from the previous exam. So three weeks later in February of 04, she began treatment with me. I did several of the things that Dr. Bergson recommends for cancer. Uh, I agree that uh, cancer cells are very peculiar 
in that their metabolism is such that they can eat only one food. Cancer cells are unable to metabolize fats or proteins, and they can only eat sugar. Okay, the first thing we did was put her on a low sugar, no sugar, low glycemic uh, diet. She ate 85 percent of her diet organic. Uh, she lived on the western slope where she had uh, elk meat available to her. She ate organic beef and chicken, uh, lots of vegetables, and fluids were restricted to water and, and green tea. We put her on some supplements. Uh, we, <clears throat> we weren't terribly aggressive with her. We put her on a lot of vitamin C to bowel tolerance. That's as much as she could take without getting diarrhea. We put her on a multiple vitamin and mineral. Uh, we put her on fish oil, EPA, DHA, two grams of fatty acids twice a day. Uh, graviola, which is an herb that has anti-cancer properties, and uh, pancreatic enzymes called Wobenzyme, which helps to digest protein and can open up uh, certain types of cancers so the immune system can get to them. So uh, Claudia was my first LDN patient. Uh, because Claudia didn't have a lot of money, what we did is I simply wrote her a prescription for 100 milligram capsules of naltrexone. I told her to dissolve one capsule in about three ounces of water, 100 milliliters of water, keep it in a, a glass jar in a refrigerator, and take one teaspoon, which is about three milligrams every night. So 100 milligram capsule lasted her a month, cost her a couple bucks. So she was able to provide herself with this therapy for about $2 a month. Uh, her second metastatic workup was uh, done after she went on the diet and the supplements for eight weeks and the LDN. So eight weeks into the program, follow-up chest CAT scan showed that the right lower lobe nodule was slightly increased. The left upper lobe nodule was slightly smaller, and the precarinal lymph node was slightly smaller. The abdominal CT showed that the liver lesions hadn't changed. So we'd, we'd done a little bit of good, but uh, not a tremendous amount of good. So I decided to add a therapy that I've been using in my clinic for a number of years, and that's high-dose intravenous vitamin C. So I gave her uh, IV vitamin C daily, five days a week for, for two weeks. I initially began at 25 grams, which is, uh, can be done on anybody with, without a problem. And then you have to check a blood test called the G6PD level before you increase it above that. And I have gradually increased her up to 75 grams. We also uh, enrolled her in this low-dose chemotherapy, which is called insulin potentiation therapy, IPT, where we give insulin and then chemotherapy in very low doses. And we used interleukin alpha, interleuk. Uh, Inter, that should be interferon alpha, interferon alpha, interleukin uh, 2, uh, which he got once a week for eight weeks between June and August of 04. Following the 10 intravenous vitamin Cs and four of the low-dose chemotherapies, the follow-up chest cancer scan showed that the right lower lobe lesion in her lung was barely perceptible. The left upper lobe lung lesion was not seen, uh, but the lymph nodes in her chest and the pleural thickening still remained. So we did, uh, four, uh, we did four more vitamin C IVs and eight more low-dose chemotherapy treatments, continued her on the LDN throughout this period of time, and then the follow-up uh, CAT scans showed that her chest CT, pulmonary nodules, and lymph adenopathy uh, was gone. The abdominal CAT scan, still no change in lesion, but the radiologist said these are probably benign cysts, whatever's left. Findings were the lungs are clear, the lung nodules seen on the chest CAT scan in April of 04 have resolved, and the CAT scan of the pelvis, the left ureter, urinary bladder, uterus, and bowel appear normal. The following year, in March of 05, chest CAT scan said no evidence of metastatic disease. The abdomen CT just had benign cysts. This is a report where essentially everything is now clear no evidence of metastatic disease. So as of uh, this month, Claudia remains disease-free. Uh, she uh, got remarried last year. She continues to take one capsule of 100 milligrams of, L of uh, naltrexone, dissolve it in three ounces of water, and take a teaspoon every night at bedtime for about $2 a month. And then she comes in and gets a high-dose vitamin C IV once a month. That's the extent of her therapy.